family. The Soul Food topic on tonight is entitled, When the Enemy Gets the Green Light from God to Afflict You. Okay, this topic, when I was putting it together, is kind of reminiscent to the um, Soul Food topic I did a few months ago where it was, uh, let these curses have their perfect work. So kind of in the spirit of that Bible study is the spirit of this Bible study. When the enemy gets the green light from God to afflict you, so the enemy, not just Satan, okay, not just the devil, but the enemy, the children of wickedness, Esau especially. When they get the green light from the Most High, as our Heavenly Father has done in times past when our ancestors were rebellious, he prophesied through the mouths of the prophets that he would send our oppressors and send uh, heathens from far to, to persecute us, to afflict us, to oppress us, to take us into bondage, to teach us a lesson. Okay? And so even now we must understand what time it is. Realizing that the things we face here in this nation and for the children of Israel who are abroad scattered upon the, the, uh, the face of the earth to all four corners of the diaspora, we are experiencing all of our hardship because the Most High has given the enemy, has given our oppressors, have given those that hate us the green light, okay? The green light to oppress us. Think of it like this, um, like uh, when you go to like a rodeo show and you'll see the, the rodeo clown out in the middle of the arena and they open the gate and they let the bull out and now the clown is running around and the clown has a lot of training, but if they make any false move, okay, that that clown could be uh, gouged with the with the horn by the horns of the bull. But that bull is raging, okay, and that bull is likened unto our enemy, likened to our oppressor, and we're the rodeo clown trying to find <laughs> some sort of relief. I don't know if you've ever watched it, but they're jumping around and they're. You know, uh, trying to evade them. There might be two out there and the bull just wants to destroy whatever is in its path. The most high has opened the gate, though. Because we've been clowns. Because we have transgressed his law. The most high, the spirit of the heavenly father has opened the gate and let this raging bull loose. OK. And we have to. In the land of our captivity, recognize we have sinned. We have to repent and keep the commandments, okay? Voting ain't going to help. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me say that again. Voting will not help. As we draw close to the November 3rd election, voting for either Donald Trump or Joe Biden is not going to change our situation. I saw a meme on Facebook where it had a picture of just, just a couple houses in the hood, kind of dilapidated buildings. And it says, your neighborhood, if you vote, under that, it had the exact same picture. And it said, your community, if you don't vote. So essentially saying, you know, it doesn't matter whether you vote or you don't vote, nothing's going to change. Nothing is going to change. Okay? Can I say something? Yeah. I saw um, one of the YouTube I don't know what you call them, the video ads. ads that it wasn't really an ad. It was a video, but I didn't look at it. But it was this man saying the black vote. Um, America wants the white. I meant the black vote to change their outcome. But the outcome, the um, the black. Um, the vote, their black votes never changes their outcome. I don't get it. The America or white people or whatever, the po politicians or whatever, they want the black vote. They always go after the black vote to get the change or to, you know, get whatever they want. Mm -hmm. But the black vote never gets the black people what they want. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So voting is not going to change anything. Filling out the census is not going to change anything. Protesting or Black Lives Matter um, you know, bearing arms and joining some of these military militant groups, you know, NFA, not effing around or NFC, not effing around coalition. That's not going to help. That's not going to help. 
okay? When the enemy gets the green light from God to afflict you, the Most High has released that bull, okay? Now, how do you deal with it? Because you know you can't beat up on the bull. You know you can't stop it. So how do you survive? How do you survive with this bull? Let's go to the scripture. I'm going to grab, well, actually, I'll have you grab um, the book of Baruch, chapter 4. There's going to be a few uh, scriptures in there. It'll be verses 1 and 2, 4 through 8, 15, 18, 25. So Baruch chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, 4 through 8, 15, 18, 25. You ready? Yep. This is the book of the commandments of Yahweh and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take heed of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Shalakia, yours says take heed of it. Here it says take hold of it. Mm. So the, in the first verse, this is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. They that keep it shall come to life, they, uh, but such as leave it shall die. Meaning of the children of Israel. And then two, you have... The declaration there, imploring Jacob, the children of Israel, to take heed to it or take hold to it so that we do not die. This law has been given to the children of Israel. Psalms 149, I believe it is, confirms that. He has given his t testimonies, his judgments unto Jacob. Okay, keep going. That was verse 2. No, um, yes. So I'm going to 4 now. Four eight. Oh, Israel. Happy are we, for things that are pleasing to Yahweh are made known unto us. So, again, that confirms it right there. The law in all of the tenets of righteousness that has come from heaven has been revealed unto the children of Israel. Pursuant to Deuteronomy 29 and 29, those things that are revealed are revealed unto us, paraphrasing. Okay? And unto our children's children that we may keep this law. So happy are we. We got the law. We have the formula for eternal life. We know it. The other nations do not. We do. Happy are we. Keep going. Verse 5. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. So be happy. Be of good cheer. Yes, we are in the land of our captivity. Yes, we are oppressed. Yes, things are not getting better for us as the people. But be of good cheer because you know the way out. You know the way of success. It lies within the book of the law. Keep going. Verse 6. Uh -huh. You were sold to the nation. Say it again. You were sold to the nation. You were sold unto the nation. As Deuteronomy 28 and 68 says, sold unto your enemies as bondmen and bondwomen as slaves. Go on. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved Jehovah to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemy. So, like you, so the title being when the enemy gets the green light from God to afflict you. How does the enemy get the green light? He gets the green light to afflict us when we transgress. Mm -hmm. When we become unrepentant of our sin. The Most High is merciful. If we repent quickly, he will have mercy. But we have become a rebellious people. We have forsook the law of the Most High God. And it says that we were sold into uh, sold to the nations, not for our destruction, not, my, not that he would cast us off forevermore, but he did it to chastise us. So that we may recognize the error of our ways. We were delivered into the hand of our enemies. Go on. Verse 7. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrifices unto devils and not to Yahweh. So by putting other gods before him, transgressing his, his commandments, you made the Most High upset. And for that, he had to teach you a lesson. Keep going. Verse 8. 
ye have forgotten the everlasting king that brought you up and you have grieved your Jerusalem that nursed you. So the writer Baruch is saying you have done all these things to the most high, but not only to the heavenly father have you upset him, disappointed him and angered him, but you also have caused the land of Jerusalem to mourn. Because no longer do we occupy our land, the land that has been given unto us and our forefathers. We have been displaced, evicted out of the land and sold into the hand of our enemies, into the hand of our oppressors. Mm -hmm. And now the land weeps for us. The land weeps for us because we do not fill the land and fill the land with joy and righteousness. We are departed. And now... There are men and women who are not the true occupants of the land dwelling in the land. And the land of Jerusalem, the land of Israel as a whole is grieving. It's grieving. Think about the blood of Abel that was spilled. The Most High Father said to Cain, I hear the voice of his blood, Abel, crying out to me. So the land is crying out because of the violence, the blood that has been poured out because of our own wretched wickedness, the, the sins of our forefathers. The land is crying out. You're going to see what the land has to say. Keep going. Verse 18. For he that brought these plagues upon... 15. 15, then 18. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even mark that one. For he hath brought a nation upon them from, a, from far, a shameless nation. And of a strange language, who neither reverenced old man nor pitied child. Meaning Babylon. Meaning this land that we are in now. A land from far. When it says land from far, it doesn't necessarily mean geographically far, but meaning in term of dispensation, in terms of epochs. Okay? A land from far. Meaning a land or time, a dispensation in the future. A land from far, a, a strange language, the language of English and Spanish and these different things did not exist in the time of the writer. OK, English didn't exist. A strange language. OK. Who neither reverence old man nor pity child. Keep going. Oh. Yes. I was thinking a shameless nation, and it makes me think about the diversity um, uh, of classes that I had to take in when I was a teacher, when I was teaching for, you know, I can't remember that word right now. But anyway, the diversity class on, well, the class on diversity that we had to take that a lot of the white teachers would get upset in that particular class. Most of them would end up leaving within the first 45 minutes of it. And it was like a two hour class that we all had to do after every um, Wednesdays. And that only happened once a year, but they had no shame in, you know, hearing about the differences in our cultures and, you know, like they don't see color and everything and like slavery didn't happen, like racism isn't taking place today. It, it, you know, it's like that's just hearing that right then is making me see it's a shameless nation. They don't have no shame for all that was done unto us. Shame really comes down to not being ashamed. OK, like you're alluding to. If one is guilty of a crime and you're remorseful and repentant, understand your guilt, then you become ashamed. If one is uh, convicted of a crime that he committed and goes to jail, okay, and in all the years of jail, he actually becomes repentant and ashamed of his actions, he'll be a changed man. And when he gets out, he won't do the same things that he did. But if a nation is shameless or people is shameless, person commits a crime, is convicted of that crime, goes to jail and serves, you know, the time of his sentence and is not ashamed, not repentant, then he'll get out and do the same 
thing. And let that speak to the spirit of this strange nation with the strange tongue who reverence not old or young. They are shameless. They are unrepentant. They count themselves not guilty according to the scripture. They're not sorry. They're not sorry at all. Saw something, just a quick little clip where um might have been NBC uh, Nightly News or something where this white woman is interviewing these three black women and discussing with them, you know, why are they not wanting to vote? Or or I, maybe the women were in allegiance with Trump. I, I'm not sure. I only saw a little bit of it. But the women were saying they don't agree with um, they don't agree with uh, Joe Biden because of the crime bill that sent many of our young black men to prison for small minor offenses. They were saying um, he never apologized. We're still looking for an apology for for this 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 gross injustice through signing this bill. And all he likes to say is there were other black caucus members who signed it. He said that doesn't that doesn't matter. It was wrong of them too. He said you hooked we them as well. So these women at least had a little sense not to have not going just along with propaganda but saying look we hold you accountable. They're looking to hold the white man accountable and all he says is I didn't do nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. Shameless. Mm -hmm. A shameless nation. Go on. Verse 18. For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. Listen to what the prophet has said. Verse 18. For he that brought these plagues upon you, meaning the curses of Deuteronomy, the curses of the scripture. The heavenly father is the one in charge. He's the one that opened the gate and let that raging bull run loose and run rush out all over you. He's the one who has poured out these plagues upon his people. But as it said in verse six, not unto your destruction, but because you provoked him to wrath. So he had to teach you a lesson. But the good news is we know the way of truth. The law has been given to us. We should be of good cheer for that. But then also verse 18, for he that brought these curses upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. You will not remain in captivity forever. You will not be diminished unto nothingness. You shall not be cast off into oblivion. But he shall bring you into the covenant. He shall restore you, he shall lift you up. These things are evident. They will happen. But he had to teach you a lesson. Keep going. Verse 25. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from Yahweh. For thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. So this is the patience of the saints. This is what we have to wait for. The prophet is saying, my children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from God. All that has befallen us for 400 plus years in this land and elsewhere upon the face of the earth where the hand of our oppressor has been uh, uh, might, mighty against us, suffer patiently. Our people are zealous, but not unto good works. Our people want to change. Our people are fighting and they're, they're crying aloud for, for some sort of changing of the guard. But the scripture says to suffer patiently. You ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make a change come on your own and of your own power. You've seen it happen time and time again. They rioted years ago. Nothing changed. Men got out and marched years ago. Nothing changed. You had some intelligent black people to, to, to come together as a coalition, as a group, and go into the, you know Congress and try to get bills passed and legislation changed and whatnot. S still, nothing changed. All the same. All the same. 
When you listen to Malcolm X, you listen to Martin Luther King, you miss, listen to the Black Panther, listen to any of those advoc advocacy groups of yesteryear, their message then is still relevant today. That should not be. If they fought hard to make a change for us today, for the generation that would come, then the, then the message they spoke yes, in yesteryear should not still be relevant today. If you understand what I'm saying. If they fought to make a change, what we hear them talk about, we should say, oh, that's in the past. That doesn't happen anymore. But the stuff they're talking about that is still happening today. Mark, Malcolm X was talking about brothers getting gunned down in the street. Unarmed black men. Still talking about mass incarceration. Still talking about the miseducation of our people. Still talking about poverty. Still talking about all these different things. And it's still relevant today. So let you know that all of those different methodologies... That will push our people to have them convinced that it will bring about a change. Did not bring about a change. Mm -hmm. But the formula is here. My children suffer patiently. So according to verse 1, you got to keep hold of the commandments and dwell and meditate in the book of the law. Keep these commandments. Once you do that, you got to just suffer patiently. Because the things that are coming upon you is not just the white man. He's getting spiritual backing from our Heavenly Father to whoop our tail. Do you understand that? The white man would have no power over us if it was not the hand of God that is lift, lifting him up to torment us. So we have to suffer patiently, knowing that this wrath of the white man is the wrath of God. The wrath of our oppressors is the wrath of God. The wrath of the policemen, the wrath of the, the injustice and the bigotry and the racism and the prejudice. All these different things are the wrath of God upon us. These plagues, these curses. Because we have transgressed and have not kept the commandments. So we do everything else under the sun to try to bring about a change instead of keeping the commandments and suffering patiently, recognizing that we have sinned. He didn't bring these things about to for us to be destroyed, but for us to learn our lesson. Read 25 one more time, please. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from Yahweh, for thine enemy hath persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction. Salakia. So he said he persecuted you, your enemy. The formula is to suffer patiently. So if you suffer patiently, you're going to get what you desire. You're not suffering patiently just to, you know, I'm just going to keep waiting. I'm just going to keep waiting. And, he give, and then he gives you a final blow upside your head and then you die and you never see it. No, but if you suffer patiently, keeping the commandments, trusting in the most high God who still loves you very much. You know what Hebrew says? The heavenly father only chasing whom he loves. Mm -hmm. And so if he's whooping us this much, then he must love us just that much. If he's whooping our behind until the, the flesh on our butt is bare, do you know he really, really must love us? Okay? But if you suffer patiently, it is not in vain. But you shall see the destruction of your enemy and shall tread upon his neck. Yes. There is a reward. There is a recompense for the evil of your enemies. You shall see your desire upon your enemies, according to the book of Psalms. You shall see your desire upon your enemies. Okay, from there I have you go to Leviticus chapter 26. Again, a lot of scripture in here. Chapter 26, verses... Ready to write it down? Mm -hmm. Verses 14 through 18. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. Verse 36. Verse 38 and 39. I'm sorry, I should just go from 38 to 42. Do that. 38 to 42. Okay. So 14 through 18, 33, 36, 38 through 42. Okay, Leviticus 26, 14 through 18. But if ye will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, 
so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ag, ag or ag, ague, ague, okay, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. So, Lockie, you hold it right there. Remember, the topic is when the enemy gets the green light from God to afflict you. She said, if you do this unto me and mistreat me by not keeping my commandments, this is what I'm going to do to you. Or better yet, this is what I will allow the enemy to do to you. Keep going. Verse 17. And I will set my face against you and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you. And ye shall flee when none pursueth you. They that hate you shall reign over you. So when it comes to the question, are there any good Edomites? We have to ask ourselves, okay? Are they the ruling class? Do they reign over us? Yes, they do. And so if they reign over us, then the fulfilling of this prophecy would be that they would also hate us. OK, so I don't care how much they may smile. I don't care how they may, you know, give you a ride home from work. Sometimes I don't care if they may offer you one of their yogurts when they're eating lunch. I don't care. No, ain't nobody offering me no yogurt. I don't want your yogurt anyway. You know what I'm saying? I don't want your yogurt. I don't want your yogurt. Play. But it says they that hate you shall reign over you. I'm going to do this, says the, says the Most High. I'm going to do all of this because you transgress my law. Keep going. Verse 18. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Did you hear what the Most High just said? Seven times more for your sins if you're not going to hearken to the first... Uh, uh, first batch of, of curses If you get the first round of curses And you don't hearken Then I'm going to hit you with seven times more to, than, of, of those curses Seven times more Curses that are seven times worse Than the curses before Because you failed to listen to me It said in the previous verse That ye shall be slain before your enemies so when you see all of these unarmed black men and women, I mean, it's daily. I mean, I just heard one just the other day. I want to say Minnesota. It might not be in Minnesota. It might be somewhere else. A police officer shot and killed another un unarmed black man. Like literally just it's like every day. Every day. But one thing we're not looking into. I know the, 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 the masses of our people don't look into, but I know the spiritually minded and the spiritually discerned look into these men and women, for the most part, were uh, destroyed because of their disobedience. This is the recompense of their own iniquity. I know the mom and dad and aunties and cousins and siblings may get on the TV and cry and be like, my brother was a good man. He took care of his kids. But in the face of the Most High, you was a, a rebellious, stiff-necked, lawless individual. And you were used as an example of the Most High to exact these curses upon us. These men and women were not keeping commandments. It's not to say that if you keep commandments that you are immune from persecution. You're going to be afflicted. You may even die. Many prophets died as martyrs for the sake of the Most High. But... These men and women, unfortunately, they weren't keeping any commandments. And they were slain by the hand of their enemy. There's no justice for their family. They try to settle outside of court and give you a couple thousand dollars, maybe half a mil. Just shh, keep it on the hush hush. While these officers get no jail time, have no charges pressed against them. 
and just move to another city and move to another precinct and get another job. And act like nothing happened. They are protected by the men in blue. They're protected. It's a fraternity. But let's not forget what the police officer's origin derives from. Slave bounty hunters to hunt us down and to kill us. So we really shouldn't be afraid. We shouldn't be, um, not afraid, but sh shouldn't be surprised when we see these things played out. This is what they did back in the day. One was hired by the slave master to go find this slave, either dead or alive. You get a certain amount if he's dead, maybe get a little bit more if he's alive. Because a dead slave is not useful to him. A slave is alive, that's useful to the master. Chop his foot off, maybe he could still work. He could still do something, chop his hand off. So nothing has changed. These bounty hunters, they, 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 um, not corral, what's the word? They round up these slaves and they put them in cages. It's called the jailhouse. It's called the prison, the penitentiary. That's what it's called now. The same thing. Keep going. Verse 33. I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out a, swore, a sword after you and your land shall be desolate and your cities waste. Mm -hmm. Verse 36. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness unto, into their hearts in the land of their in, lands of their enemies. In the lands of their enemy. Now hold up. He said that if you don't listen to the first, if you don't hearken to the first round of curses, I'm going to send curses that are seven times worse. He said, I'm going to drive you into all these other nations. Read that last scripture one more time. 33. Yeah, I guess. And I will scatter you among the heathen and will draw out a sword after you and your land shall be desolate and your city cities waste. Not that one. 36. Okay. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth. So the Most High is saying, the strong men, I'm going to either kill them or I'm going to put them in jail. But those who are left, he says that I'm going to make them, send them with a faintness into their heart in the lands of their enemies. So in these, in the lands of captivity, he's going to make those who are not dead in the grave or in jail, make them faint, have them faintness of heart. What does that mean? That they will assimilate into the ways of the heathen, the customs of the people. They will assimilate faintness of heart. Because if you have courage, then you'll have the boldness and the fortitude of mind to stand aside for what's going on and stand for righteousness. Whenever our righteous ancestors were in the midst of heathens, we stood out. We were distinct because we kept commandments, whereas they were pagan. Their customs were wicked. But if we have faintness of heart, we fear for our life, we fear for what's going on, then it's like, let me just go along with it, with it, with what everyone else is doing. He will give us faintness of heart. We will become assimilated to the heathen, following after their ways, doing whatever it takes not to either be in the grave or in the jail. We assimilate. What's the rest of that scripture say? And the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them. And they shall flee as fleeing from a sword. And they shall fall when none pursueth. That's what we experience when we are pulled over by a white police officer. Maybe some years ago, it wasn't so much on our mind. But I guarantee you now how many black people feel that. They don't know if they're going to lose their life today. Just because they accidentally itched their ear. 
that he thought it to be a gun and pulled out a gun and shot you there out on the side of the road for a simple, you know, running a, a red light. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing that when a police officer knocking on your door, knowing that you didn't do anything wrong, that that could be your last day living. Open up, it's the police and break down your door and come in shooting and everything with your kids in the room watching TV. You don't know. Your life is hanging in the balance, but these things will continue to happen because you broke my commandments and you failed to hearken unto me. So I'm going to send even worse plagues on you. You think I'm a game? Oh, you think I'm playing? Okay. Okay. I got these curses for you. I'm giving your enemy the green light to afflict you. You're going to feel these curses. You're going to feel every last one of them. Keep going. Verse 38. <clears throat> and you shall perish among the heathen. You shall perish among the heathen. Go and on. the land of your enemies shall eat you up. The land of your enemies shall eat you up. That concrete jungle you dwell in, the hood, the slums, the ghettos shall eat you up. Is a dog eat dog world? It's because these lands, these communities that they have placed us in, they were designed as a, a social experiment, if you will. To destroy us from the inside out. That we never prosper because we remain in this state. If you take a free animal and keep them, you know, uh, shackled and, and, and bondaged in a cage, it changes their entire nature. You make their food scarce. You make their fresh air uh, uh, inaccessible. You take away those liberties. You take away those different things. That animal will become. Ch it will change its nature. And it will do whatever it has to do. To survive. So when you see our brothers on the corner. Acting a fool. Killing one another. It's a byproduct of one. The curses. The spirit of wickedness. And. The result of this social experiment we know as the hoods of, of America, where black people reside. Just like, uh, what's the film with uh, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Switching places or something like that. When the white man had everything given to him, he was successful. But when the roles were switched and Eddie Murphy was given that and he was living in a life of poverty, you saw what he uh, regressed into. Okay? He didn't have those things that he once had. He found himself having to steal, having to, found himself having to live out on the street. And the wealthy white men saw it as a, as a joke, as a prank, as a social experiment. Let me just see what happens here. If we switch the role of the black man and the white man, what will happen? It amused them. So in the same way, ye shall perish among the heathen and the land of your enemy shall eat you up. You gonna perish right there in the hood. You ain't leaving the hood. You might be able, you might go on a Sunday drive and drive around the suburbs and drive around these affluent neighborhoods and see these mansions, but you ain't never going to live in them. At the end of the day, you're going to drive your behind right back down to them, them, them filthy, nasty, uh, 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 poverty stricken neighborhoods and get in your dilapidated building in your apartment building, your roach mouse and rodent infested building with mold and everything else with no heat. Broken windows, sirens going off all times of the night, bullets, you know, flying every night and stuff like that. You're going to deal with that. This is your reality. It shall eat you up. It shall consume you. This is your life. This is your existence because you failed to keep my commandments. And all of your get rich quick schemes shall fail. It said that you will plant corn or plant uh, crops and it'll be in vain because the enemy will come and eat it. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Verse 39. 
And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemies' lands. And also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they, they pine away with them. Pine away. Waste away. You're going to waste away in America. Hoping for change. Looking for change. Go, getting out and voting every four years and nothing changing. You're going to pine away. You're going to pine away. Keep going. Verse 40. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humble. If their uncircumcised hearts be humble. If they will humble themselves and recognize you sinned, your father sinned, and that everything that, that has happened is because of me. Once you get to that point and come back to me, let's see what happens. Keep going. And they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Verse 42. Uh-huh. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember and I will remember the land. So if you repent of your sins, the sins of your father, turn back to me and recognize that all these things have come upon you because of your iniquity, then will I remember the covenant I made with your forefathers. And I will remember the land and I will deliver you. Thus saith Yahweh. Okay. Last scripture. Grab me second Chronicles chapter seven, verses 13 through 16. Seven. Chapter uh, second Chronicles chapter seven, verses 13 through 16. Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 13. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Salakia, let me hold, just hold it right there. You know, we if, if you've come out of the Christian church, okay, you've heard this scripture recited so many times, okay, taken out of context and, and you know, recited so many times, even sung in songs, okay, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, so just said over and over and over and over and over again to where it loses its savor. So now in this truth, we have to go back, not just read that scripture, but read all the scripture, get an understanding of what the heavenly father is saying to Solomon. Because this was spoken unto Solomon right after the, the, uh, com the what's the word I'm looking for? The inauguration, if you will, or the commencement of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just the groundbreaking of the of the temple. Okay, the sacrifices were given. There's a great feast. All of that took place, and then the Most High visited Solomon and spoke to him. But it says in verse 13, "If I shut up heaven and there be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among, pest, pestilence among the people." So if he's saying, "If you as a people, which are my holy people, who I have blessed," If you one day recognize that things aren't going as you thought it should be going, okay? If things are, if you are, if you are facing poverty and you're facing all of these different trials and plagues, it should send a red flag to you, okay? Just like when our great ancestors in the wilderness and they were under the command of Moses and then under Joshua. 
when they were obedient and kept the commandments of the Most High, went out to fight, they conquered all the nations. But then when they fought an inferior people, they found themselves losing. Why? Because they sinned. And so the same thing applies now. Look, I'm going to bless you, Solomon. I made you king in the stead of your father. But if you find yourself not winning, so to speak, notice something is wrong. What is it that's wrong? It's your people have sinned. I'm not, I'm telling you, Solomon, I'm letting you know right now, I'm never going to just afflict you just to afflict you. My joy is to bless you beyond measure according to the law of Moses. I've set you for, before you blessings and a curse. If you keep my commands, I will bless you. I will set you above every nation. You will never want for anything ever. But if you find yourself in want of things, you got to look at yourself and say, yo, what's going on? Yo, we must be sinning. We must be acting up. We must be displeasing our father in heaven. Okay? That's essentially what the father is saying. If any of these things happen, you got to really look at yourself and see what is it that I'm doing that's displeasing the father and allowing this to happen. Because we're his chosen people. He's not just going to randomly send locusts to devour land or send drought or send pestilence. And famine, he's not just going to do that just at, at random because he's tired of blessing us. He's got blessings for days and he loves to bless us. The only time he ain't is if you disobey. Verse 14, for if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Now, a Christian can sit, sit up and sing that. Dorinda Clark Cole can just sing her heart out singing that. Fred Hammond. Fred Ham they could just sing, sing, sing. Okay. But what does it say? Turn from their wicked ways. Y'all get up and sing and shout and foam at the mouth and pray and fast and do all that stuff. Seeking the face of God, you say. You got to seek the face of God. <laughs> you got to do this. <laughs> but you're not turning from your wicked ways you remain in your iniquity and for that you continue to be plagued as a people and may not necessarily in the modern day be locust upon the land or not you know the rain falling because we don't control the food anyway the most high will allow the rain to fall because it's that that the food is for esau and we just get the scraps of it so we don't get the, the pestilence and all that. Those plagues have evolved into something else for the modern day. So when we see these things plaguing us as a people, it should cause us to repent, but we don't do that. We go into the Christian church, we hoop and holler, we have church service for, for six hours straight, and then get out of there and, and go eat a pork sandwich. Break the Sabbath transgress, worship these other gods, hate one another. We have not turned from our wicked ways. Read verse 15 and 16. Now mine eyes are, I'm sorry. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attempt unto the prayer that is made in this place. Shalakia yeah, in the temple that he just built. So he's saying if you don't repent, seek my face and truly turn from your wicked ways, then my eyes are closed to you. I'm not looking at you. My ear is attentive. So that means if you don't do these things, then I have a deafened ear. I'm not listening. I'm not looking. I'm not paying you no mind. The heavenly father is saying, I'm not paying you no mind if you're not keeping my commandments. For all you Christians that say the law is done away with, that Jesus nailed it on the cross and the curse of the law is lifted. And Jesus said, and you're doing all that stuff, right? The Most High said, I'm not paying you no, no mind. You shall stand on that, day, on that day and say, Lord, Lord, we did all these things in your name. And Jesus is going to look at you sideways like, what? He's going to say to Aunt Michael, who is it? Get out of here, you worker of lawlessness, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. But Jesus, Jesus, I never knew you. You can kick rocks, dog. I don't know you. Yo, get angels, get him out of here. Who is this? But Jesus, Jesus, I, in Jesus' name, and worshiping and foaming and doing all this other stuff, 
I never knew you, dog. I never knew you. What's your name again? Never heard of you. Never heard of you. Don't ring a bell. I never heard of you. Why? Because you keep not the commandments of my heavenly father. And your name wasn't written in the Lamb's Book of Life because of that. So we're going to leave it right there and finish up. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Well, then go ahead and read it now. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. For the children of Israel. Hallelujah. Shall